News and Talk 1380 WAOK, an Odyssey station. News of Talk 1380 WAOK. Austin McCall, nice to meet you for the first time. Dog, you've been famous my whole life. I think I, I like all your movies. I'm keeping the buck, dog. That was for me. So I want to know why the hell are you so nice? Like, why are you been you've been nice the whole time? And I want to know if I'm gonna finally get to find out your thoughts on people changing the changing the rules once you start killing them. I'm about to talk in codes, okay. so you understand. Okay. We hear you. When you're a narcissist, mm. you lose everything. Okay. You see people being narcissists now, they're losing everything. Right. That was me. Okay. I lost my family around. I lost everything by being arrogant. I lost everything by, 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 by thinking I was smarter than people. You know, we always talking about having seats at the table. I was at all the tables. But when you're a narcissist, you forget and all that goes away. My mama, who was a church girl, went and pulled me to the side and said, you need to humble yourself, brother. She didn't talk to me like a son, she talked to me like a lady. Humble yourself, brother. So, just because I make more money than you don't mean I should disrespect you as a brother. It's because I, I do this and you don't do that. So, once I humble, because listen, I had it going on, I know that, and I just, and then when reality kicked in, when I walked in that 76,000 square foot house, no wife, no kids, no nothing, gone, everything gone. So at that point, I had to start all over and I had to humble myself. Can I ask you, uh, does this feel like therapeutic almost like you to get to see yeah. by yourself? Yeah, because I'm, because when you grow up with a drill sergeant, there's no excuses. So I'm not allowed to, so I'm not allowed to talk to nobody about that. You have to hold that in. So, you know, being, so when my guy was director and he asked all the right questions, I was able to question. release it out. Yep. My last question would be, where do you feel like you would have been without that drill sergeant in your life? Never know. Without Big Mama, honestly. You know Never know. Saying, Never know. Never know. I, I actually, I actually think about that all the time because we all come from the same place. We like what we like. I like that type of music. I like hanging out with them type of people. But you know, my father would say simple sh like, "If you do it again, I'm gonna kill you." And I'd have to think about getting knocked out by him. But it also taught me how to become a leader. Like, okay, we, this dude was talking noise. You about to go stick him up? But my dad said, if I did get caught. You know, you kill me? No, nah, y'all go ahead and I'm So it just, you know, his, his, his tough, tough love just taught me how to develop uh, critical thinking. As a black kid, like in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? I read, I read one of your books when I was probably in second grade. It was like you read on the paperback on the thing. But I remember seeing a section that people talking about your pops and everything. And I'm somebody who's out of here. You know what I'm saying? So I got to see you talking about what you meant, like have a duty in your house. And how you was preaching up the ass with So I get somebody who's running around, yeah. running from the ass with Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah. News and Talk 1380 WAOK. Okay. My name is Austin McCall. How you doing? Good. Good Rob, to meet you. Nice to meet you, brother. Pleasure. Rob, nice to meet you, bro. So you are one of the directors of the I'm the director. I'm the director, yeah. yeah. What was it like working with the big guy? Uh, it was great. I mean, he is a... Uh, an icon and he's a presence and he's a force and uh, he's honest on camera off camera so it's a super super genuine experience was this your first time doing a docu-series or documentary at all no, no, okay no, i make film and television commercials a whole bunch of stuff so yeah what would you say the difference is uh doing a docu-series for an athlete or one of the greatest athletes of all time versus you know doing one uh, the usual who's not that right yeah. uh i think that um i mean it's you know it's a different thing with an athlete because i feel like you know, I've worked with artists, I've worked with actors, and a lot of different performers, and they approach their craft very differently. Mm -hmm. I think there's such a born from earth thing that exists from some of these athletes, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, it, it's just like this thing that they don't even think about. They don't even like, it's this innate thing in them that they're like, we we appreciate, you know? But he doesn't he doesn't think anything that he's this big, it's just like, this is just who I am. He doesn't you know what I mean? Yeah, he doesn't understand it, so, so there's what, something like that. So, uh, when you were making this film, what did you, what was the, what was the story you were trying to tell? What did you want to bring out? 
March. I mean, whatever was honest. Yeah. I mean, there's really no way to force anything like that. Like, I can have an agenda. Yeah. I want to talk about his career. I want to talk about Lakers. I want to talk about championships. I want to talk about him uh, aging out and realizing I can't play at a certain level anymore. But it's really about whatever exists organically. You know what I mean? So it all depends. Do you feel like, my last question would be, do you feel like you accomplished the goal you were trying to reach? It's a beautiful film. We did great, man. It's a beautiful I can't film. wait to see it, man. Yeah, yeah. News of Talk 1380 WALK, Austin McCall. I'm here with... Jamal Harrison, the younger brother. The younger brother. You tell me what it's like being the younger brother at a big man. Uh, it's interesting, you know. We've come a long way from waking up side to side, eating Pac-Man cereal to just... Y'all was eating like boxes or bags of cereal, you know what I'm saying? Boxes, man. Okay, okay. I, I had won. the bag, I had the bag, it tastes the same. Boxes, yeah. Bag boxes of cereal, it's, it's, it was interesting. Our break dancing days and everything like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the I, Yeah. All that. That's what we did, man. So what was the shoe strings? What? The shoe strings. Yeah, he used to. He used to. He that too. He used to walk me up to the commissary. He used to go in there and get the new shoe strings. Then we used to battle the other kids in the neighborhood. We win. Yo, hey, that's, that's what it was. So what, what was it like when y'all when you saw everything change like in like like that? It was it was different, you know. It was just like okay, now it's getting real. Now it's getting serious. Cause I didn't, you know, at first you, first you dream about stuff like this, Shut but up. then when it's actually like a reality in your face, and then you got people coming from here, you got people from coming from over there. It's just it's a whole di it's surreal. I got like a couple homeboys that like for some like out of you know through the grace of God they done made it like you yeah. know I got one homeboy that might be an NFL Hall of Famer, you know what I'm saying? But the one thing that the I feel is that stay the same. Like what's it like to see somebody get millions of dollars and stay the same? Because I know how it hit me. It's well, the way you think about money for me. Me, I mean, I try to tell people that I personally know. Like you know. You, you can't change, you know, a zebra can't change his stripes. So you gotta you gotta stay the same, man, because if you don't, you know, you can lose your mind. You know, that's just what it is. We was always taught to stay humble and then that's what we did, you know. Yeah. That's a good thing. We stay humble and we you know, we was raised by a great woman and that was that's what it is. And a great father. The first superhero. Yeah. So what's it so all right, you taking all this in, you know what I'm saying, you got your brother's documentary, like a documentary about your brother's life, like your dog. Yeah. Right. The person you was fighting with. What's it like for you to be here in this moment with your with your own son. That was your son, right? That, that was walking with the hat? Yeah. What, what's it like, brother, to be, be here right now? To show him how we lived and how we grew up, he don't he don't understand it now, but the one that's older, Texas, he got... Right? Yeah. Okay. The one that's older, he got, he got like, the, the, the bun on his head. Oh, uh, I see. He got the suit on. Yeah. Probably when he sat down. Nah, he over there. He's like... He's probably when he sat down, but yeah. For him to understand... Yeah. For him to understand, because he's playing basketball now, so I'm trying to school him in the ways of how we grew up and let him know, look, this is how it's going to go. Yeah. It ain't. I mean, I know you're living in a different time with the social media and everything like that, but it's still the same. Yeah. The only thing that changes is the name and everything like that. It's still the same. You listen, go to school, get good grades. It is what it is. That's how we got to do it. Thank you for making the first superhero. And what was it? It's, it's big, big guy, big guy, man. Mm -hmm. You want to get tell my viewers what is your name, man? My name is Dr. Lucille O'Neill. Dr. Lucille, what's it like being here in this moment at your at your own child's documentary? Like they 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 hear documenting your son, like the, the boy you had to throw over your knee. They talking about him like this. What's it like? It's just an honor and a privilege, and I'm so happy for the love and the support that he receives from the community and from the rest of the world. I, I just feel so good tonight, so special. I was telling uh, I was telling Shaq, you know what I'm saying, I grew up here in Atlanta, um, I'm 26, so I was born in 96, but when I was in elementary school, we used to have the book fair, and they would have his book of the y'all life, you know what I'm saying, and I was telling him, like, being a kid here, growing up, I don't have a pop, so I don't have no dad at all, you know what I'm saying, just me and my moms, and I read, I read his book in, like, second grade, I was probably seven, it was my mom being like, you gotta, you gotta read if you wanna go outside, kind of thing. And it was the part in there where he met uh, his uh, his stepfather, you know what I'm saying, the disciplinarian. And I was telling him that, that reading that section of his book where he was talking about, yeah, I needed the ass whoopings, I needed it. It kind of made me feel like, oh, they not just whooping my ass. Like maybe, 
maybe I might be able to get some money at the end of this if I just relax a little bit and just do go along with it. Like, what was it like watching him turn his life around and dedicate himself to something? Well, what he did, he began to take instruction. You know, it's part of the process. We parent and we love and we discipline the way we know how to do that. So I'm happy that he took the lessons that we taught him and he turned it into something good. He had dreams like we all do, but we always told him that those dreams will manifest if you do this, if you do this, you know, we just try to give him instruction so that he'll know you have to put in work in order for something great to come out of your life. And did you ever think it could go this far? Did you ever think it would be here and me living like this, having having red carpets where people ask you a bunch of questions about what it was like being a, being a mom, you know what I mean? We learned along the way, don't put any limit on your dreams. Whatever you dream, it can manifest right in front of your eyes. Yeah. Good. New, Austin McCall, News of Talk 1380, WAOK. -A WAOK -A been That's a, forever. Yes, they are very old. That is us. That is us. You clean as hell, Ernie. When I moved down from Milwaukee back in 65, I think WAOK -A was here. Wasn't Joe Walker at WAOK? -A yes, he was. He was awesome. Okay. I, I digress. Go ahead. So I'm Austin McCall. First of all, you are clean as hell. Let, let's talk about your shoes. What kind of shoes are those, uh, Ernie? There's a little pandas action. <laughs> you know the name, y'all. I love Ernie. <laughs> Ernie, can I but first off, I want to ask you about your foundations and all of the work you do outside of the sports world. So can you talk about the foundations that you had and things like that? Well, my wife and I, our our foundation is is uh, in honor of our son, our late son Michael, the Love You Too Foundation, uh, and so we. You know, we like to benefit any children's charities that we can. We're just trying to, you know, like we're big fans of adoption. We're big fans of the Muscular Dystrophy Association uh, because they're very close to us. And, and so we're always just looking at kids and saying, how can we help? You know, Ernie, uh, I, you've been in my life probably my entire, I'm only 26, so you've been in my life my whole. 26? Yeah, so I'm 26. I can't even remember when I was 26. 96. <laughs> But my entire life, you basically have been a constant. What's it like uh, being on inside the NBA for what? What's it now? Twenty-five years at this point? Thirty? Let's see, look, I've been at Turner since '89, man. So Crack was out. This will be, be like thirty-two years okay. doing the studio show, and it's uh, yeah, that's the, that is the that's the round mouth. Um, no, and that's a perfect example. I mean, it's just it, it is so much fun to work on that show. Uh, and, and there's something I always say. I, you know, I, I have a get-to job. This is I get to do this. It's not a got-to job where you where you feel like, oh, I got to do this. I get to do this. You know. And so it's been it's been tremendous to be with him, to be with Kenny, to be with Shaq. This is this is I know. Lucy, Miss Lucille. Um, Doctor uh, Lucille. No, you fine. You fine, Doctor. That is Dr. Lucille right there. Forty years. <laughs> so, uh, no, it's been it's exactly what it looks like on TV. It's it's as much fun as you can possibly have, and um, and great guys to work with. Man, I appreciate you. I appreciate you being an uh, ally all these years for us. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you doing a dap and not a handshake. I see you. You know what I'm saying? I see you, Ernie. Uh, you have a good day. Yeah. Talk 1380 WALK was good. Chuck, was good. Yo, this is my first time ever meeting you. I just, damn, you're not that much taller than me. How, ten a game? Ten a game every game? Hey, come on, man. Every game? Don't, don't be confused by my size. I'm explosive. Ten a game? Bro. No, I've been lucky and blessed, man. I was very explosive. My ability to dribble probably was my biggest asset. Bro, you look crazy. Because no. the, them big guys don't want to move their feet, man. They want to beat you up. I was looking at, bro, when my, uh, when my uncle used to tell me to go back and look at the real footage of you, yeah. like the real footage of you on the Sixers to see what it was really like. And then when you was on the Suns, of course, the yeah. best, player, best player in the league, one of the best players in the league, whatever people want to argue, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. So to find out that you was only 6'5", 6'6", six, 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 and you 10 a game for your yeah. whole career getting yeah. boards, it's insane. Oh, man, I've been lucky and blessed. You know, uh, you know, the, um, I, I, I'm just, that's all I can say. But, you know, I get the chance to work this big old fool every week, which is really cool and a lot of fun. What was it like when he come when, when this dude just shows up in the league one day? I was born in '96, so I don't know what was going on before Shaq. Yeah. Well, I think the difference between Shaq is, you know, there's a lot of tall guys, and some of them were fat or heavy, or some of them were tall and lanky. Shaq 
was the first guy who came in who was long and lean, who could run and jump, and it was a scary thing. I mean, to be that big, that athletic, man, it was a scary thing. So what was it like? I mean, you saw his, you saw his career from beginning, and you got to call it at the end. What was it like when you had to tap your dog on the shoulder and say, you know what, let's just bring it on home, baby? No, it, it ends for everybody. You know what I'm but he's on the Mount Rushmore of some of the greatest players to ever play this game. As are you. Yeah, yeah thank you, brother. And uh, But, man, I'm just glad to be working with him, and it's a lot of fun to work with him. And let me ask you before I let you go, because I know you ain't trying to keep asking questions. Talk about any of the foundations that you had and what it's like being the head of foundations now, uh, just being from Alabama, being from the South, and now you running all of these different things. Well, I think it's important for me. I'm trying to do some good stuff, and uh, I just – Gave my six million dollar to historically black colleges. Damn, which is really cool. Six million dollars. Uh, yeah, uh, I did. I did uh, I've been trying to do a million a year, and I just finished my six one, which was Spelman. So I'm just trying to do good stuff, man. I've been lucky and blessed, and I'm gonna keep doing good stuff. Man, we appreciate you here from Atlanta, dog. Right, Thank so, you. No, I'm here with the legendary drummer boy, oh, really? legendary Atlanta producer. Yes, yeah, sir. Hey, yeah, boy, fresh out of Memphis, was heading in. You know, you know my uncle, right? Who is that? Nard. Oh, come on, Big Nard. Come on, man. He been. I told. He told me. He told me that every time I try to interview, I told him I'll catch you myself. You know what I'm saying? And work. Work like that. How you feeling? You know what I'm saying? What you doing here at the Shack Premier? Did your man? What's up? Oh uh, yeah, man. We just supporting Shack. You know what I'm saying? He always uh, uh motivated me. You know what I'm saying? And 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 just you know what I'm saying? Like just gave us hope in a, in a different way that man, you can make it out. You know what I'm saying? And you can do what you want to do. You can you can you can have fun. You can speak your voice. You can speak your mind, and you can still be loved and, and show that we are just one race. Yo, I've been seeing you. It's like you're back in the studio. You working on stuff you know what I'm saying what's it like for you you're already really a legend in the city so what's the point of you working hard are you waking up going to the studio every day still putting out putting in time and effort it's fun for me you know what I mean and putting hits on the board for my own label uh we working on well I mean we just dropped welcome to my city volume four and that's been a unification process in Memphis bringing all the top artists in Memphis together Memphis on fire right now you know what I mean so definitely check out our most recent project welcome to my city volume four we got big boogie we got juicy fruit we got uh uh, uh, my boy on uh, Fast Cash Jizzle, Big, big Homie K Dog. Big Boogie. Yeah, he going crazy. Absolutely. So, with the way music is shifting, you know what I'm saying? It's really Detroit and Memphis and Atlanta right now, you know what I'm saying? At the top of the music. And what is life for you as somebody that's been a pioneer for Memphis music and Memphis rap to see how it's flipped on his head now? Uh, it's a blessing, man. You know what I mean? To just see kids, you know, be able to tell their story and be heard and, and make a living doing it. You know what I mean? Being able to do something that you love and being able to touch millions of people. You know what I mean? Uh, it's a blessing, man. You know what I mean? So don't take it for granted. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, use the power wisely. News and Talk 1380 WAOK, the voice of the community. We're WAOK Atlanta, WVEEHD3, an Odyssey station.